be sure to hop on over to the Spiritual Broadcast Network. It's the go-to place for all things spiritual. You'll discover internet television shows that you won't find anywhere else. You can also choose from hundreds of hours of spiritual documentaries and movies. You'll enjoy on-demand and live internet television programming 24-7. Best of all, we add new dramas, comedies, talk, and reality shows and more on a daily basis. So why spend countless hours searching the web when you can quickly find just what you want on the Spiritual Broadcast Network? Thank you for tuning in to Shift Happens TV. Join us each Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time as we take you on a metaphysical journey. Be enlightened and entertained as we take you through life, love, and beyond in an inspiring and humorous way. Live your life with no regrets and die laughing. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Shift Happens, where we entertain, enlighten, and shift consciousness one show at a time. We're your hosts, Connie and Martin Jordan. I'm Connie, obviously, and my <coughs> husband, Martin. I'm a metaphysical comedian extraordinaire and author of two books, and my husband, Martin, is a psychic medium, a hypnotherapist, a singer-songwriter, behavioral scientist. Scientist? I don't know. <laughs> That'll work. Paranormal overachiever. Uh, we live in Sarasota, Florida, and Martin does do private sessions in mediumship and psychic readings and hypnotherapy. We also travel around. Right now, we're going to be we travel around Florida. We're going to be in Fort Lauderdale next week doing a group past life regression at Ocean Therapy yes. at Lauderdale by the Sea, and then we will also be teaching a fairy workshop there on next Saturday, as well. And it's really we just did one this past Saturday in Sarasota. It was a lot of fun. So. Definitely look us up on pureheartspace.com for where we're going to be. We're going to be in the UK in November, but we're traveling around Florida for right now up until November. And Martin is available, like I said, internationally. You have clients in Australia and Japan and all over Europe. Phenomenal medium. I tell you what, we couldn't have gone through the loss of our son the way we have if it wasn't for our connection and understanding and also your beautiful, amazing gift that keeps us Andrew, a part of our everyday life and thank everything you. that we do. So I want to thank you for that publicly. Mm, wow. For keeping me here. Got it on video now. Damn it, I should have thought about this first. I, I'm thinking I'm not liking these live shows. <laughs> Edit that out later, George. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> right. Well, we're dressed, as we said, um, in our street clothes today. Yes. We decided, you know, hey, let's do our street clothes. Yes. For our special guest that we have today. Morgan Lynn, who's a, a very good friend. And you know, I have to say, people can say what they want about cyberspace and all that kind of stuff, but you know, we met Morgan through a message board, an angel message board, and then hooked up on Facebook. And yeah. we just felt this kindred spiritness, part of our soul family. And we finally got to meet her in November when she was on her gypsy, nine week gypsy trip. Mm -hmm. And it was fantastic. It was like we have known each other forever. And you know how it is when you meet somebody, I, I'm, yes. I'm guessing a lot of people with the di dating sites, you know, I hope we get along this well in person. And we did. She was supposed to stay just a couple of days and stayed six days with us. And we've just hit it off. So I'm all of, I think the cyber relationships are, friendships are fantastic. And we are so excited to have her here on our show today. So I'll have you do the introduction, Martin. Sure. As Connie's already said, we've got uh, the wonderful, beautiful, interesting Morgan Lynn with us today. And she's one of the most interesting people I've ever met. And uh, like I said, when we posted it today, we are doing the Hotties of Steampunk show today. And uh, this is why we're dressed this way. <laughs> That's right, Morgan has spoken at Steampunk Convention. And she does some wonderful steampunk jewelry. jewelry yep. She's an angel therapy practitioner, medium, psychic, channeler, paranormal communicator, healer, um, paranormal, paranormal overachiever, overachiever like such yourself. as myself. Yes, it's like a sister from another mister. Absolutely. <laughs> so we'll just sort of, without further ado, uh, Morgan, are you with us? Hi guys. Yes, hey. I'm here. <laughs> you guys are making me laugh. Deja vu. <laughs> anyway. I know. I'm having a deja vu. <laughs> and see, this is the thing about good. you know what's great about tuning in live, as you have witnessed, Morgan. There was things that you saw live that are not in the archives. 
see so that's why it's always good to turn in live into our show because there's things that happen that won't be in the archives yes <laughs> you never know what you're gonna get no <laughs> well like we were uh, you and I had discussed before um, when we when you had come to see us in November I loved your story uh, that how you work with the goddess the Morrigan and I love what I love about her is her kick-ass attitude love it I like to know what she does because I like you know, to know what her it's like she would totally get me yes you know <laughs> and I love the story that you told me about um, how you started working with her can you share that with us again yeah absolutely um, she introduced herself to me years and years ago but I didn't realize we were actually going to work together until she walked up to me in a ceremony and asked if I was ready and so of course I'm gonna say yes I'm not gonna say no and waste her time but what was created out of that was I would I had a ceremony space in my backyard that I would go out and visit and you know that would be where I would go to connect and where I would feel like I was um, talking with spirit and this gypsy trip that you mentioned was being guided to take and my guys were asking me to get in my car start driving no destination no duration no idea how it was going to work out or how long I was going to be gone and that was pushing a lot of my buttons yeah that's trust that's, that's bringing up a lot, lot of trust a lot of survival and and um, safety issues for me you know they're just asking me to go we'll, we'll work it out on the way and I'm like are you kidding me oh no 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 <laughs> I don't yeah. know how to do this but um, so over the course of those couple of months when I was mentally preparing for this trip, I would go out to the ceremony space and I would connect and I would feel and I would, that would be where I would get my strength in my, in my mind. Well, one particular evening, I woke up in the middle of the night petrified. And so what I would do is I would get up and go outside and just connect and then go back to bed. Mm -hmm. So I got up and went out to my ceremony space and started connecting, but then I fell to my knees and I was just sobbing. All of this fear was coming up. Everything was just making itself known to me, and I was just purging it is the best word I can use. Right. But there was a moment when it switched from needing to purge and needing to express it to, okay, now I'm just wallowing in the fear. Now I'm just feeling tiny and small and, and doubting myself. So, and, and the Morrigan hugged you and took you in her arms and, right? Oh, yes, yes. She patted me on the back and said, there, there, little one. <laughs> no, that is not what she did. <laughs> walks, up in, <laughs> walks up into my ceremony space and says, are you done? And I look up at her and I'm like, I don't know, am I done? <laughs> and she looks at me and says, you're done. <laughs> so... And it was suddenly, I, I felt like she wiped the crying away. I just stopped crying. I, I, had, I was suddenly aware that I was on my knees and feeling ridiculous. So I stood <laughs> up, dusted myself off, and I went back to bed. <laughs> and that was how we began. Well, it's one of those yep. guides that actually lets you know. It's like, if you don't stop try crying, I'll give you something to cry for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. yeah. I, I enjoy that of her, though. It's, yeah. It's, Absolutely. You know, we talked about how... At this point in time, we really need to feel what we're feeling, but get to work. Feel it, honor it, have the moment, but let's pick up and move on and let's get proactive. Well, that's how Pure and, Heart works with me. And Pure yeah. Heart, for those that may not know, um, when our son passed away almost five years ago at 16, mm -hmm. four months after leukemia diagnosis, that was the name that was given to him, was Pure Heart. And even as much as, you know, he was our son here and his loving yeah. energy, um, well, he's harder on you than me. I oh, can do no gosh, wrong. Oh, gosh, yeah, no. <laughs> Connie can do no wrong, or pretty but again, mama. But again, you know, uh, but you know what it is about, too, Morgan, what I have found with people, it's either they, they won't acknowledge their emotions or they just can't, they won't move out of them. You know, and it's about finding that balance that you can honor how you feel, like Martin and I do with the grief. Um, honor it, you know, because him and I will look at it going, wow, what part of the grief is this? And just, yeah. and just kind of feel it, and yeah. then definitely you have to move forward or you get stuck in it, and, and then you're not living, you know, your soul's purpose. And that's what I love yeah, about the Morgan. The, yeah, we fall into the habit as humans. We, we wallow way too much in our past. We, we, we hang on to it. We remember it. We hold on to the, the wounds and the, the hurts and the memories. There definitely is a balance in there. It's, it is about feeling it, honoring it, but not letting it dictate your experience, not letting it 
rule your life yeah. and imprison you in the fear and the shame and the guilt and whatever else you want to call it. So we have to be mindful when we're experiencing emotion to observe it, experience it, honor the heart because the heart is expressing itself, but not let it choke us, not let it take over. And then now that emotion is now running our life and we're making choices based on those emotions. Exactly, because you know, I was, you know, I have been told in the past uh, by family members, oh, the past is the past. And I would say it's not the past until you heal it, because as you know, the past will keep showing up in the present. Yeah. Oh, the more you try oh, yeah. to squash it, the more you try to run from it. <laughs> it's cyclic. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 It, and and I, I have a relationship with that where it really just has a message. Like, I really believe whether it's past life issues or even trauma in our current life. The only reason we carry it with us is because we haven't quite gotten the message. Mm -hmm. We haven't gotten what that event or that memory is trying to tell us. And so if yeah. we can just sit for a moment and get a little bit more proactive with it and say, okay, you're still here. What, what are you trying to tell me? What am I not hearing? Let's, let's get this out. Let's do this. And it has a way of dissolving itself after it's given you the message. Now, on your gypsy journey, which I thought was fabulous because you got to spend time with us, you were doing some of this kind of ceremony work, weren't you, like all over the U.S.? Yes, um, I did, and it has grown because I just finished my second gypsy trip. Um, which we didn't see you. August. No, I went the other way. <laughs> I went the other way to the other side of the country. Um, it is growing to such a level. It, the whole premise of the ceremony is when a person is really ready to let go of things, they may not know how. They may not know what that means or how to look for it or what to do about it. She, the Morrigan, is stepping forward and saying, I will take it from you. If you give it to me, I will take it from you. And then that creates a whole clearing so that now you have a space to put things that you actually want in there. But that and, has to um, be a conscious thing. Yes. It's you can't just sit it. on your ass and expect the universe no. to fill it up with something new. No. It'll give you back more of what you've got if you yes. don't do the work. Ooh, yes. Good point. It, she creates yeah. clearing. Yeah, she creates the clearing and re yeah. releases the things. Even if you don't know what you need to release, going into sacred space with the intention of, I'm ready to release what doesn't serve me anymore. Yeah. So that's a nice little benefit. But then you're called to the carpet to be in charge of your life. It's not about, oh, yay, I'm free, I can do whatever I want, and then we split back into the habits. We have to be diligent, and we have to watch for the habits when they come back around. Yeah. Yeah, and that's where the work is. And it's, you know, I can, for me, I'm afraid not to do the work, and I'm afraid of yeah. staying stagnant. So, you know, fear is what drives me to keep moving forward. You know, when people say, how do you do what you do? I said, I'm fearful not to. You know, because to me, the consequences for not moving forward or for not healing yeah. are so much greater. And there's nothing wrong with fear if you use it, you know, if you use it yeah. right. For good and not evil. Yeah. It's so weird looking at your skeleton eyeballs here. <laughs> Do you see that? But how cool does it look? <laughs> it looks pretty cool. <laughs> if they start talking, I'm going to really freak out. <laughs> <laughs> God, I wish I could get to blink my eyes fast. Look like they're... They'll start moving. channeling. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> yes. right? Oh my God, if they start channeling <laughs> well, a message. Well, it's the balance. It's the right and the left channel. <laughs> then it's the whole Jeffrey thing. Wow, what are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> I look like I've been smoking Jeffrey all morning. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, we were talking before about the chakra stuff. Cause that's, is that part of the ceremony work that you're doing now too? Or is that a, a whole yeah, other? It, it gets intertwined in there. She actually goes in. The way the whole ceremony is set up is um, I channel her. So I leave and she comes in. Ooh. And she mm -hmm. does a dance of sorts where she'll actually, I've, I liken it to a spiritual or psychic surgery where she goes into that person's body and she extracts what is keeping them down, extracting the things that they're willing to let go of. Again, they don't even have to know what that is, but it's extracting the things that are keeping their vibration low. And then she replaces it. She rewires and recalibrates and puts their body back into alignment. And mm -hmm. so how it looks is we have, you know, our whole circle of people, but then she works on one person at a time and um, does what she needs to do with them. And then they go back and they, they get back in their space and then the next person comes up. And um, she does work with the unified chakra. That was the kind of the addition to this last 
round on, on the second gypsy trip that I did. Mm-hmm. She's incorporated the unified chakra. So connecting everyone's chakra to this one chakra system and working on that unified chakra at once. So I Ooh. can see how the work is starting to, how yeah. my work and her work is starting to blend. You know, that's, um, you know, now that we're, we've got two places that we're working with on this coast, um, when you come back to Florida, we might be able to get you a couple of those kind of mm. ceremonies set up, and not only oh, on yay. the West Coast here, but possibly even on the um, East Coast where we, we go. I think they'd be real interested yeah. in that. That's different. It's unusual. Yeah. You know, you... Yeah. And it works. Yeah, because I think different. that's what's great about it. It's, you know, because I think people are looking for... Because not, not all the stuff that's been out there is really resonating with everybody. And that's what we, you know, Martin, with you and I, when we've done readings together, what we were finding way back was people were going to be getting their own healing modalities from their guides themselves. Yeah, but the more interesting it is, the more entertaining it is, <laughs> the more people right. will listen, the more people will show up, the more they will pay attention. Well, now that they're listening, the guys are like, Morgan dances? I'm so in. I'm so in. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And some of the women. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I said it. <laughs> but here's the deal. Why does this have CTV? Now I'm all blushing. <laughs> <laughs> no, but here's the deal. Anyway. I, s- I saw on your website also that you do the same kind of work that I do in that you don't do the work. You know, you deal with the client. And right, yeah, because yeah, cause like you say, Morgan yeah. comes in, and now with Martin, pure heart, that yeah. energy's been coming in. and. But if the client isn't willing to do the work, see ya. You know, it's, it's, by the it's not me. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't want to be following you around you know, for the next yeah. three years for you right. trying to piece your life back together. That's your job. It's my job yeah. to make sure that the tools are installed, that I, we take out whatever's not working and we put back these tools that do work and then it's up to you to do the work. Mm-hmm. Because... Yeah, the thing I say, the thing I say is I show up for the people that are willing to show up. Oh, absolutely. Show yeah. up for their lives. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they show up for their lives. I'll show up for them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I... I work for them like because that. that's what so. that's the basic message i've gotten from all the guides i've ever worked for and they've always told mm-hmm. me just show up you know we'll show up for yeah. you if you show up for us and that that's been an arrangement that has worked in my life with my guides with especially with pure heart now that it, it really does but you have to show up you can't be sitting in it all the time mm-hmm. and i tell people all the time know where you are if you're sitting in your crap Acknowledge it. Acknowledge it. Say, hey, this is cool. I'm sitting in my crap. Because if you don't know where you are, how the hell are you going to know where you're going? Yeah, yeah. You know, even yeah, Magellan you I, needed you a start. Yeah, you and I say a lot of the same things. Yeah. You and I say a lot of the same things. Yeah, yeah I tell people, if you don't know how you feel, mm-hmm. because, I, again, I go to the chakra system. If you don't know how you feel, you can't do anything about it. No. So we need to get the crap off of you yeah. so that you'll stop numbing out and get you a little bit more proactive in there. And mm-hmm. It's work, people. It's work. It, it's hard. I won't fluff it up for you. I'm not going to no. say, oh, this is love and light. No, it's work. You it have is. To get your hands love and light, my ass. <laughs> <laughs> what know, are you, channeling the skeletons now? You know, it's like there's no substitute. <laughs> there's no substitute for honest work. Well, as you know, you know? Morgan, you know, because God has I mean, Martin and I have done the work not only pr- even before Andrew was diagnosed and passed. You know, it's hard. And that's what people get. They look at what Martin and I have, our relationship. It's like it didn't come easy. Mm-hmm. You know, we didn't come out of the box this way. No. Which that was probably a wrong way, but never mind. I'm not going to go there. But <laughs> you just did, but anyway. <laughs> but you know, it does take work, and the healing. You know, but you know, the rewards are so great. It's so great. And well, like it, you said, I I don't want to not do my work. Like I, my life works when I do my work. And I can't imagine getting up out of bed every morning and just going, whatever, it doesn't <laughs> matter, I don't care. I can't imagine that. Yeah. Because my life doesn't work that way. No. No. You may have a morning like that, but, like, you know, and this is the thing that, I, that we learned in the hospital with Andrew and that we've continued is it's about going moment by moment. Mm-hmm. All right, this moment, I'm not feeling so great. What can I do for the next moment to make it better? Yeah. You know, and if you look at it by moments, it's a little bit, you know, it's like eating the elephant, a little piece at a time. And so, it's, again, it's the moment by moment. That way it seems more doable. That just blows my mind, that. What? The thought of eating an elephant. <laughs> right? It's so big. How are you going to do it? you got to do it a piece at a time. A bite at a time. 
one bite at a time. <laughs> <laughs> Quit puffing on the Jaffray in between. <laughs> okay, no. no more dressing up for him. <laughs> yes, I like it. <laughs> Well, the one good thing is, is that all we had to do was just dress from the neck, you know, from like the chest up. Yeah. We can come in naked from the neck down. We are awesome. actually naked below the waist. Yeah. That's how we roll. Agree. That's how we roll, man. <laughs> now, with the, are you still painting your mandalas? Or are you going to be picking that up again? Yes. Ooh, um, yay. It was on, yeah, it was on the second trip that I started getting information, and I don't want to share anything other than I'm going to be doing a whole series, and mm. they're going to have a meditation that go along with them. So you'll either Secretive. be able to buy the, yeah, well, <laughs> just kind of want to hold the energy for myself and just oh, kind yeah. of, you know, you, you let it gestate and let it grow and build. And um, But, yeah, I'm going to be doing a whole series of them, and I'd like to have a guided meditation for each. Mm, so nice. you'd be able to either purchase a print with the MP3 of the meditation, or you can obviously purchase the original mandala and um, you get the, the meditation with it. So oh, I'm nice. pretty excited about that. Oh, I know yeah. I love mine. I knew yeah. the moment I saw it. Oh, it's beautiful. Perfect. I mean, the first I'm night so it kept glad. me up, it, just the energy. I know it was chatting I away know. at me. <laughs> just I got know. the right I'm amount of freakiness. <laughs> just the right amount of freakiness in it, you know. Well, and then I, I love the fact is that you took the print, like the one I bought, and then you make the jewelry out of the, the mandalas as well on the little wooden squares. And then, because uh, you also have, do you have, I know you were making the steampunk jewelry. Are you still doing that? A oh, actually, I know you were because you were showing all kinds of pictures yeah. and you're up all night. Yes, I have been bitten again, and I am consumed with my jewelry. I love that feeling where... I forget to eat, I forget to sleep, all I want to do is create, and I have 25 new pieces that I'm going to be launching. Um, nice. I just need to get photographs and, yeah, descriptions and things like that. Uh, there's a lot of, like, office work to do after I create the pieces, and so I've got to do a channeling, the uh, cards that go along with it, and the pictures, and post them online and everything, but I'm really excited. I'm hoping to get that up next week. Good. Yeah, because I loved, uh, yeah. when you were here in November, I loved those pieces as well as the mandala pieces that uh, you have really beautiful stuff. Now, are you going to be going to a convention again soon? One of the um, Comic-Con, something? <laughs> yeah, well, I've gotten to a place where I really enjoy the cons on a personal level. Like, mm -hmm. I don't necessarily want to work them um, because they're so much fun. I don't want to be stuck at a table the whole weekend. <laughs> so I, uh, we're going next weekend to Dallas. Uh, my very favorite band, Marquia Vaudeville, is playing. And, um, and Steampunk Giraffe, so, or Steam Powered Giraffe, sorry. They're both playing at this really, really cool little theater, so we're going for a masquerade ball. Oh, that's cool. Fun. Now, how, yeah. would, how would you describe Steampunk? Because, like, when I saw the look, because you were really the first that I had really heard of it, I had kind of seen it, but I don't really know what it is. How yeah. would you describe it? Well, I, I equate it to, for people I equate it to, like when you go to a rent fair and people are dressed up in their renaissance, period clothing and they do the role playing and they act out and they do things like that well steampunk is that except it's the victorian era mm -hmm. and so you have it's a it's a combination of the the old world corsets and top hats and tail coats and things like that and mixing it with a little bit of the sci-fi and the steam powered type yeah. contraption you know and so you get a lot of a, a big mix of different personality flavors so you'll have either like mad scientists or you'll have your corseted debutantes or you'll have um the robotic creators you know where they're these mad scientists but they work with the robotic gears and and cogs and things like that so it's just or time travelers there's a lot of time mm -hmm. travelers that that they they fall into that kind of role playing it's just a lot of fun it looks at all yeah, the thing I found out about it is that it's just a big family. Yeah. Nobody really cares as long as you are being your authentic self and you're showing up and you're honoring others in their authenticity. And so it's, for me, that's, that's paradise. I well, love that energy. Oh, absolutely. Know, well, it had to be the most interesting of eras because I've always been a Tesla fan. And when I saw Steampunk and I started researching it, that's what spoke to me. It's all Tesla. It's all... Oh, I love the clothes. Oh, yeah. Love it. And... Uh, yeah. Being a an avid lover of time travel and Doctor Who and all that stuff, you know, it's 
looking back on that, it's sort of H.G. Wells, it's Jules Verne, it's all of that Edgar yeah, Rice Yeah, I really like that stuff, know. too. Yeah. So we kind of resonated with it when we looked at it and went, yeah, I've been there. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, was I, there. Really got I rocked that last my, lifetime, you know. <laughs> yeah. My very first past life regression that I received from somebody, it was a, a hypnosis regression, um, was a Victorian lifetime. And yeah. so I've had a lot of fun exploring that the, the steampunk because it's allowing me to heal those things that I've left behind. And mm. so I have that relationship with it where it's, it's now, I look at it as the steampunk now were the Victorians then, but they were the rebels. They were the ones that broke the rules. They were the ones that yeah. didn't necessarily fall in line with law and order. No. Yes. But we're here now, and now is our time to express ourselves. Yeah, so and, it's, <coughs> and it is that time. Oh, yeah. But oh, you'll yeah. find that people that do this kind of stuff, like the, the steampunk and stuff, they're all very highly intellectual. They know mm -hmm. where the planet is going. They know mm -hmm. what their part is in it. And they're just sort of, they, they know that compassion, community, tolerance, and all of that yeah. are the ways to go. Yeah. You know, that you know yeah. nobody's going to turn up <coughs> and 15 people aren't going to stand around and laugh at their steampunk costume. <laughs> you know? Now from the pictures I saw. <laughs> uh -huh. and, and I've seen a lot of the pictures. They do. They, some of them yeah. take it really seriously, but it's like everything else. It's like people who go to rent fairs and stuff like that. They, you'll see the ones with the expense of costumes, and you know they've saved up for it, and you know this is years of doing it. And I saw the same thing looking at photographs of steampunk, and always fancied myself as a time traveling elf, you know, <laughs> with with the steampunk gear, you know, and it's that's probably what's going to develop in me as my alter ego as I move through this, singing Tom Petty songs, <laughs> which is okay. <laughs> Eating elephants. <laughs> eating elephants a little piece at a time, of course. Oh, no, that's the only I, way it works. I feel a song coming on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Wizard of Menlo Park. I want credit. <laughs> I want credit. <laughs> right? Yeah, we'll have to make one of those conventions sometime. Oh, yeah, it'd be kind of fun. Oh, and walk walk in like we own the place. You know, yeah. that kind of thing. Everybody does. <laughs> I'll sort of, I'll, I'll have it set up, a TARDIS set up in the uh, foyer and just step out of the TARDIS and all my steampunk gear. Yeah, that's what you should do. That's the ultimate photograph I want of me in sort of right. steampunk gear just coming out of a TARDIS. Now, I know um, you do mediumship as well, and sure. Martin had read something that you do. What is it, Martin, there that you have? Paranormal? You have something there. You called me on something. Yes, I did. Communication. She's a paranormal chick. <laughs> um, <laughs> she removes moves entities, uh, talks to paranormal, talks to, talks to entities, Paranormically. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that. It's a steampunk word. <laughs> 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 you can um, almost hear the steam as you say it, you know. It's like I, oh, my God, you're in my head. I totally was. <laughs> 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 so, so, okay. Um, yeah, the mediumship work that I do is a little different, um, I think, than what, what you do, Martin, because I, I love working with clients, with their loved ones. I really do. But my heart goes more towards um, haunted places where there are spirits there, but they don't remember that they've died, and they actually are looking for a way home. They want to find a way to get home. And you they care die, too much. You, know. <laughs> you really I do. I care too much. You're a nurturer. What? <laughs> what? I don't care too much. <laughs> You're so funny. No, I do. I, I like going in and having conversations with spirits that have forgotten that they've died and walking them through that process but then assisting them in going and, and crossing over. It, it, that's where my heart goes. That's really, um, I love that. That's really fascinating. So what have you found? Because I know you uh, had to have watched a lot of these ghost hunting shows. Uh, do you pick up that? Because, you know, what, what has been your experience when they have ghosts that are, what do they say, malevolent? Malevolent. I, that's it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nasty. Yeah. Nasty asses. Not nice. <laughs> Have you come across well, any like that, that, you know, when they say, oh, they're scratching me, oh, they're doing this, you know, that are no. bitch slapping She's people. touching me. She's touching me. <laughs> no, I actually, um, I've, I've watched so many of the Ghost Hunter shows that I can tell now when they're lying. Mm -hmm. I can, it's a vibe. Yeah. I can tell and when they're lying. And their lips move. Well, there are some authentic moments. I, yes. I do, I, I can tell when they're getting an authentic thing, but... 
there's a lot that they it, it's sensationalism and I understand it's Hollywood and I get that but I have never come across a ghost or a spirit that has ever been malevolent that has been able to hurt me or attack me that's what we have now, found too what's your opinion on the scratch marks though well, in general I was about to say, it could be demonic it could be I don't go there because that's not where my work takes me but I understand the malevolent energies being more demonic. Now, I have a different relationship with that because I don't believe necessarily in evil. Thank you. I think that, yeah, yeah, I, I think they have a job to do as well as the angels, but, you know. I put myself in their place. Them. I do. And if I'm going to be demonic, no. I'm going to take a limb, maybe, a couple of fingernails. You know, I'm not going to scratch you. I'm not going to yeah. leave little tiny little red marks on you. So to me, that's not demonic. That's mis mischievous. Yeah. And some of the work that right. I've done and uh, some of the work I hope to be doing coming up, identifying the, all, of, all of that energy and identifying that, you know, what oh, is yeah. an evil spirit? You know, what is a malevolent spirit? What, what can it do? And if I come out of there with my body covered in scratches, if that's the best they can do, I'll do that all day. Well, when you, know? you when you, we were in the hospital with Alicia when she yeah. had that emergency surgery, you Martin went to the hospital in the ER, and he decided to allow all the spirits to walk through him that he is yeah. seeing, and he came back looking like Edward Scissorhands. <laughs> like I danced with Edward Scissorhands. Wow. Yeah. But it wasn't that they were being mean; it was just that Martin was allowing them to walk through him just to see what it would be like. Yeah, but you know, looking at the word, you know, like those kind of words, some people aren't attracted to that kind of energy and malevolent, you know, mischievous. I mean, I've, I've come across a lot of mischievous spirits because I'm from Ireland. Yeah. They, they're all over the yeah. place. I like it. Yeah, but malevolent, no, if it was a malevolent spirit, you know, you, would, you wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't be able to get away from that. I mean, you would definitely go away and feel something mm -hmm. and everybody there would feel it, not just one person, not just because you're psychically open to it. There yeah. would be, well, why didn't he feel it? You know, that's the kind of thing I look at. Everybody, if you've got a real spirit in there and it's doing some damage, everybody will get a piece of it. You know, that's my, right. and my dealing with, with darker energies and darker spirits. Well, you both brought up a good point, and this is what I wanted to, because I'm sure there's people out there, because you and I, Morgan, are on the same page as far as um, demons go or, you know, the whole evil thing. And um, so I think between you and Martin, I would love to hear the explanation as to because we don't believe in that hell thing and there's a little guy with a pitchfork coming to get our soul um so oh, yeah. how would you explain that then what is a demon to you then um well and i get it a lot because you know we do the angel work so there's always someone that's going to ask the questions well what about the evil energies what about demons and fallen angels and such and I really look at it in a more of a big picture aspect. I get that they have a job to do the same as the, the, those on the light side have a, have a job to do. Yeah. They are the ones that their role is to keep our vibration down, to keep us in fear, to keep us playing small. I don't know why. I just, I, that's my relationship with it. I get that that's what they, that's what they do. They want to keep us, keep as many of us here and keep us in a low vibration so we're food. Our fear is food. Well, yeah, and that's what I tell people. It's just fear that feeds that kind of energy. And I think that maybe that is the whole setup of Earth anyway, is to have that polarity, yeah. to, to learn yeah. how to deal with that and to be able to find through all of this our higher self and the higher vibration and to find out the truth about who we really are. And I guess as a soul, it's, you know, um, a really – great growing experience as far as that learning. I mean, what's your take on that, Martin? Well, again, demonic, since it's lower vibration, is created by uh, man, since it is lower vibration. Nothing really low vibration can be created by any beings that are higher level. Like a lower vibration who's on the other side wouldn't really be, you know, you gotta look at it's not that low of a vibration if it's in spirit, if it's energy. You know, to not be on this planet physically, you would have to be vibrating pretty high. So most of the energies that are on this planet that do any kind of damage are thought form energies that are created by the people on this planet connect due to fear. They, they, they create their own hell. They create their own demons. Well, it's even know. like what Maya Angelou says. that when And they leave them in houses after they die. You know, this is, this is my take on it. And you've got to go in 
and scoop it out. And you got to sweep it up. Even Maya Angelou has said that that worms and everything have mm -hmm. a vibration, and that in her house she won't allow the lower vibration or things in her house because yeah. she says it gets into the carpets, it gets into the curtains and the furniture and everything else like yeah, that. Well, energy so can be absorbed, you yeah. know, and it's, it's just absorbed and it'll stay there and it'll hang around people, like low vibration energies will have a tendency to hang around. It's like pollen. If you walk through it in your low vibrational energy, it'll stick to you. Because somebody told me a long time ago that your aura is like flypaper, you know, things will stick to it. And it does periodically. That's why I use elementals. Um, the fae sitting in the yard having them pick my aura clean you know it's and I protect myself with darker energy than most people because that's and if you saw how I'm dressed today this is I feel very comfortable you know dressed like this the only thing that's yeah. missing is the fangs I'm sorry <laughs> it's all good <laughs> now Morgan I know that um, I, you have beautiful pictures in cemeteries and I would yes and I think this would be really cool for again for you guys to discuss because when yeah. we were in Ireland which has it, hundreds uh, of years old as the graveyard, there wasn't really a lot of spirit activity. No. Now, do you find a lot of spirit activity in graveyards when you go, Morgan? No. Yeah, no, see, Mark I actually doesn't either. don't. Every now and then, though, there's a stray, honestly. Um, I went to, where was I? Oh, Washington on my last trip. Went to a really, really cool cemetery. It was all sectioned off in these weird little sections, and um, there was one girl there that I walked by her her grave site and she was sitting on her headstone kind of oh. with her hands under her chin and she saw that I saw her and she's like oh oh wait don't no I want to talk to you I want to talk to you but it was really clingy and heavy and I'm like mm -hmm. no I don't I did any strays I don't <laughs> so I just I I just acted like I didn't hear her and walked away um but very rarely is there any kind of activity going on yeah see that's what um I think surprises people when we tell them that especially in Ireland where you know the the headstones go back to the you know 1500s 1600s and you know Martin doesn't really feel the energy there at all and yeah. I mean why would you I mean you know because the majority of people when they pass they do move on and go mm -hmm. to the other side the majority do and, and if they do stay they sure as heck wouldn't why would you stay in a graveyard I mean that wouldn't make any sense you can go anywhere you want oh, and, I, and I can see that those that don't realize they're dead or the ones that choose to not cross over because I actually have like this spectrum that I work with there are mm -hmm. ones that have died and they know they've died but they don't want to cross over right. for whatever reason mm -hmm. um, either they're afraid of crossing over or they feel like they have things to do they're the ones that don't know they died and they just keep acting out whatever is familiar to them mm -hmm. but my experience the longer someone is dead whether they know it or not, they forget it. They forget that they died because they start mm -hmm. losing touch with their reality. Yeah, that kind of makes so, sense. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like a, a dementia of sorts for a spirit. They forgot yeah. that they died. Well, and uh, um, go ahead. Well, I was just thinking about the movie The Others, where she yeah. forgot, and, yeah. I, and I, I guess that kind of makes sense too. Yeah, that, that they would eventually. In the same forget. respect, they weren't hanging around the gravestones. No, they were ha hanging. Well, they go like she right. said to the familiar yeah. place, like their home. Normally, is what I was going to say is where I find those kind of spirits, is the last place that they were. Well, like before the they passed. Courthouse. Yeah. Or hospital. Um, places like places have been burned down, like asylums and stuff like that. You may find one or two hanging around there, and if you get lucky, you'll get an angry one. Well, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Is yeah. they'll they'll, they'll tend to hang out where they died because yes. if they forget they died, yeah. they're going to go back to the last place that felt familiar, and that's usually where they died. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, because yeah. they don't have that time thing, it doesn't feel like years have passed, or you know, it seems like yeah. they're just in the, in the moment. But some of the most peaceful places in the world are cemeteries. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I'd love to go and yeah. journal and sit and just reflect. Because in my hometown. Hey, there's a big cemetery called the City Cemetery up above the uh, the Dairy City football grounds. And we used to go there every Sunday to watch the football because we didn't want to pay for a ticket. <laughs> so you go up into the graveyard on a Sunday and you take a stroll through the graveyard and into the back of the graveyard, you'd stand on the gravestones and watch the football. And they would say that was a Catholic thing to do. A huh? very Catholic <laughs> thing to do. You know, don't be standing on so-and-so's grave. It's a great, great, you get to see the match really good from here, you know. Because we didn't look at that. I mean, by the time I was eight years old, I'd seen more dead bodies than you could shake a stick at anyway. I'd been to more wakes. You know, it's 
you know, you, you just sort of get used to it, you know, and it's, so it doesn't really, death has never really bothered me, you know, one way or the other. Yeah. All right, that's. Yeah, I don't, I don't like dead bodies. Nope. <laughs> I don't like them. No. <laughs> I, I'm good with spirits. I don't want to see the bodies. I just, yeah. I'm good with the spirit. It's okay. But again, I think that's kind of what, you know, that's the part of the spirits that, you know, and it's our fear. It's like people's fear of the unknown and stuff that make them watch, you know, the ghost hunting shows and stuff like that. And it's getting to the point now where they've got to make it bigger and better. You know, you just can't go in there and get one EVP anymore. You can't go in there and just get one. Oh, did you see that shadow? You know, <clears throat> you know they've got to get more and more and more to keep people interested. Well, we saw with the show we were supposed to be on, mm -hmm. you know, with that beautiful picture of Andrew showing up and as an energy form, and they blew us off because it wasn't scary enough. The fact that maybe yeah. the education we could have had, the Yeah, that's why, because of how we presented it yeah. to them, it was how they wanted it initially, but then a new new producers, I guess, said, no, we're, we're taking this show scary, and is it on anymore? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. I don't know. So, yeah, it's I don't know. Time, it's time to update that, I think. I think we're coming into a new phase yeah. where conversation is coming in and people are actually wanting a little bit more Substance. than just mm -hmm. tactics. Yeah, then, then yeah. the... Um, what, what's the word that I want to use? Because it's really kind of exploitive and just so dysfunctional, a lot of these shows, yeah. the majority of the Probably. reality shows. And I'm looking, I'm going, this is what people want, really? Yeah. I, it's not even a guilty pleasure of mine, those. I mean, I'll watch some of the reality shows where there's going to be a winner, and I pull for them, and you feel their, the thrill of their success. But these ones that I'm just blown away, at, at what I'm like, wow. Yeah. Well, is this where our society yeah, is? And you, and you know, Morgan, yeah. I mean, what you have to offer, what we have to offer... A lot of the people, I'm thinking, there's so many other people that deserve the media airtime that have something worthwhile that can shift consciousness and make shift happen, not the crap that they're you know pimping out now. We're getting there. I was actually at a steampunk convention in Jefferson, Texas, and Jefferson is the, like the second oldest city in Texas, and it was or the second oldest port city. So it's incredibly haunted. It was so delicious. Good to um, know. Oh, my God, it's so amazing. But we were getting ready to go on the ghost tour, and I was kind of hanging back and listening to the tour guide talking about you know, who we were and what happened, and all I kept hearing was, was how she was talking about how these people died or who they killed or she was talking about all the blood and guts of it. And I'm listening to the ghost behind me say, this isn't our lives. This isn't what we're about. This isn't who we are. Yeah. You know, why can't you ever say anything? Why can't you ever say anything about us, about our lives? Why is it always about our death? And there was a whole group of them just, they were kind of mad. They were just like, this is stupid. I can't believe you, you know. So I opted out of the tour. I felt like I needed to stand with them and say, you know what? I'm not going to go on this tour. I'm not going to yeah. have this for them. It was really an interesting moment. That's a great idea for now a new ghost tour to start a new trend. I'm glad yeah. that, that you mentioned that because how awesome would it be to go on a ghost tour? Who's going to go on that ghost tour? I would, positive. What I mean, I would love to hear what the ghosts are actually saying <coughs> now. That would totally kick ass. <laughs> and then you yeah. can ask them questions. How cool would that be to ask them questions? Like that what would was be it, very cool. Like what is it like to live in that time period and, you know, just that kind of a thing to hear instead of just reading about it. I think that's a great I would I would go do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Felt very ignored. They felt very exploited. Exploited is a good word. So why did they not move on? Did you find out? No. It was a very interesting evening. Um, I had channeled just before that so it was really open. I went into a hotel room, and oh my God, it was amazing, and that can be for another show because it's a really long story. And I was really open, and I, as I'm listening to them, it was kind of like mob mentality. They were, they were all yelling at once, and mm -hmm. I'm just like, okay, I, I'm not going to be able to do this. So I just kind of opted out, and then my boyfriend and I went for a walk, and we just kind of chilled out, and <laughs> I grounded a lot and let, you know, let myself come back to normal, whatever normal right. is. <laughs> Yeah, that's the same thing with Martin. You know, when uh, even when Andrew was here, we would be well, we would be somewhere, and a spirit, random spirit, would come up and try to talk to him. And then Martin just, you know, gets in this this place, and Andrew's looking at him, and he goes, "Daddy needs some time." I go, "Yes, <laughs> let's go to the salad bar." <laughs> well, yeah, he helps the spirit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that, yeah. And that was from when he was a little boy, so he was kind of used to that. 
dealing with daddy having to you know deal with random spirits showing up here and there <laughs> even when we were out of town you know they need to have a show on spirit bounty hunters <laughs> and go after like belly oh, the kid's fun. ghost you know but who's to say he's a ghost why it's tv who cares <laughs> You know, and I'll dress up like, you dress up like steampunk cowboys, you know. <laughs> Chase after Wyatt, the Ar Wyatt Earp's ghost, you know, stuff like that. Well, there is oh, that no. place in Arizona in the old time saloon. Yeah, when well, you, you get good, good Hill Cemetery, you know, the OK Corral there. And yep. uh, go down there. Now, yeah. I know we've covered some of the things. What are some of the other things that you have going on? I know you've got other things, too, right, that you've got going on, that you're working on? I I do. I am working on my next gypsy trip. I'm looking at, I don't know if we talked about it already, but I'm looking at going to the Minnesota, Michigan area Minnesota. around April and May, probably okay. a four-week trip. Yeah, that's and, nowhere uh, near Florida. Nope. I, well, well, if you're in Michigan, you're going to have to get out and see uh, Sean Wise and his band, if he's playing, because okay. he's, he's, he's awesome. Good. Yeah. Good. Well, and I'm thinking about going to the East Coast, and if it all works out and it, and it gets to be um, a, a successful trip, I thought I would just drop down into Florida and come see you guys. That Don't toy awesome. with us. <laughs> I am not. I am so not toying with you guys. Hey, she so showed serious. up. Yes, she did. It when you said fun. Right, when you said you were showing up with my mandala, oh, I could just bring it to you. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We hear that all the time. Oh, we're gonna come by and see Aww. you, and they don't. And then I'm like, oh my god, that she's was an really awesome. Coming. That was an awesome <laughs> trip because we had our good friend T W with us. The Howler was yeah. was there at the same another time. Another gypsy heart. Yeah, another I, you know I traveler. Brother. Yeah, yeah, another troubadour, and it was it was a lot yeah. of fun. It really was. We had, we had a good time. Hi. It was good to see someone else, uh, another female in their power. You know, no, yeah, no. Not T.W. Tim. is Tim. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Stay in your shot. Stop, absolutely. <laughs> no, but it was, an, it was good to see another, another female in their power because we don't see too many of those. No. Not consistent okay. enough anyway. Yeah. Now, I know your website is embracewithin.com. Dot com. Right, and so that's where they'll be able to find the mandalas when they're ready and your steampunk oh. jewelry. That's awesome. Her schedule is up there for the new gypsy yeah, tour. Oh, mm -hmm. excellent. Yeah. And I know that you also, like Martin, do private sessions as well over the phone. I do. I'm actually creating a uh, something new that I'm playing with right now is creating kind of a mentorship or a spiritual coaching call where I'm basically – talking to this person that wants to go forward in their lives but they don't know exactly how and asking them where they want to take it what do they want to do with it like are they wanting to be in a spiritual business do they want to be of service or is it just more for her you know their friends and family or themselves but designing a mentorship type program where we build on each session and every session has homework and you have to journal and you do all these things and um, it's incredibly tailor-made. I mean, it's, it's so personal for every single person because we all have our own paths. We all have our own directions that we want to go. And so that's something that I'm getting very excited about. I want yeah, to work good. with people. I want to work with people that want to work. That's, that's my thing. I want to work with those that want to work. And so I'm excited about that. Yeah, well, that's awesome because I think a lot more people out there are wanting to change. They're, they're wanting that shift. They're getting sick and tired mm -hmm. of being sick and tired. I guess, right. and they want to make know this it doesn't work. Yeah. Well, that's and that's yeah. similar. You know, I forgot to. We always forget to say you're a life coach as well. And I think this is what's so great about what you and Martin do, Morgan, is that having intuitive psychic life coaches. You know, you can't. You know, you can't lie to you guys because you know. Because like you know, th like what Martin will say is, he goes, "I hear you talking here, but I'm listening up <laughs> here." You know, you can keep yeah. this going, your mouth going, but I'm yeah. listening to what your higher self or your guides are saying. And that's, yeah. and that's the kind of coach you want that can see through your BS. And, and that's where the real change is. And I love, you know, eventually down the road, I'd love to have Evie Kane on too because she's a psychologist and a psychic, you know, okay. and that's the kind to me because, you know, you're going to get called out on your shift. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah. I mean, if somebody's looking at, I can, I can tell it. Like, if I'm doing a reading for somebody and they're smiling and they're nodding and they're going, "Oh, yes, I, I totally get that." Which I was but just I, doing. I want you to know. <laughs> but I feel their energy going. This is crap. This is stupid. I don't believe you. This is dumb. And so mm -hmm. I'll just go, "Yeah, no, you don't get this. You're not, you're not being honest with me." And of course, their jaw drops open. It's <laughs> like, "Yeah, let's go. Let's get, 
enough BS. Let's get to work. Let's you're here to work. Let's work. Well, so sure. I enjoy you're that. well I'm easy. I find that easy to do with my private clients. Not so much yeah. the commercial readings that I that I do at the moment. But you're I not able know. to do it with those because they're not interested in changing. They're only interested in you telling them what they want to hear. Well, I also think um, uh, don't. I would say for you, Morgan, uh, Martin has found this, that when you start even doing, uh, let's say it's a reading call, it ends up turning into being a life coach. Oh, call. absolutely. If it's going to go yeah. the right oh. way, mm -hmm. that's the direction it will go in automatically. Yeah, I do a lot more spiritual counseling than I do actual yeah. prophetic, futuristic stuff because it's, my whole stance is about let's look at what your life is and where you want it to go and let's look at where it's not working yeah. because that's really that's where change comes from you're not going to get change with yes i see you in five years marrying the man of your dreams that's crap you're that's commercial get, readings <laughs> you're not going to get that that's i don't do that i won't do that well, but i mean that will guarantee you them calling you back for at least five years <laughs> is it here yet? Is it you know, here it's yet? a marketing strategy. Yet? You know. <laughs> Should I go get coffee today? Should I go get coffee tomorrow? Is it going to be at the coffee house? Yes. Yeah, no, yes. I'm, stuff like that. I don't have time. Don't right. have time well, and that's like you know, Martin had a um, sample reading he did for a place, and it really kind of blew me away that this person who does readings, uh, obviously she she just must read tarot. But she came into this reading, and now it's supposed to be mediumship because that's what we were going to be doing. And she was like testing him, like, well, I said this to my guides this morning. What did they say? She didn't even really? talk to her guides. She lined up her deceased loved ah. ones, and she said, those are the ones that I want to come through, and here's the messages, or here's the information I want them to come through with. And it's like, when does that ever work like that? And here, Don't her waste my time. You know, I hate my time being that. wasted. And then what, what Martin does, he just trusts what comes through, and her guides came through and came through with things that she needed to hear but didn't right. want to hear or didn't hear at all. And, you know, I think that's the best advice we can give anybody that's going for a reading. You need to be open to hearing mm -hmm. what's coming through. And, yeah. and, you know, because a lot of times it's not what you want to hear, it's what you need. They know your life. They know what you're going through. They are watching you struggle. I have this whole segment on my radio show that I say, um, I call it Shut Up and Listen. I don't take questions anymore. When people call in, I get their name and I tell them what their guys want them to know and that's it. That's what you get. That's, mm -hmm. this, is, this is the information that's going to serve your highest good. We really get to just shut up and listen and get to work and stop hanging on to the, am I gonna get this job? Am I gonna meet this person? Am I gonna go away on vacation? Like, no, stop. That those those are wasting our time, those kind of attachments. Yeah, I love that because it yeah. is about just, it, you really most of the time need to shut up and listen. Yeah. That's what they told me. They're like, you need your people to shut up and listen. I'm like, ooh, <laughs> I like that. That's catchy. Because this is, that this, this is kind of cool because a lot of light workers out there, they're getting weak. You know, they're sort of giving the clients what the client wants to hear. Uh, and yeah, it's yeah. like, you got to stop that. You know, it's it's about, here's the information I'm getting. Pay attention. If it doesn't re resonate with you, yeah. you know, go Gordon Ramsay on them. <laughs> well, here's the way I look at it. The Morrigan has no mercy on me. When I'm in my stuff yep. and I'm wallowing, being a victim, she doesn't take it easy on me. I'm no. not going to take it easy on clients. I'm going to no. give them what they need. Yeah, well, that's yeah. the training. You know, that's the same with Pure Heart with me. It's and that's they're training you that way because they, that's the way they want you to be. They want you to be that that strong in your convictions and what you're getting for the yeah. client. And that's been the way you know people will look at me and, and say, you know, I'm a hard ass, I'm a bitch or whatever. And it's like, you know what? If I've had to do the work, I'm not letting anybody else buy. I'm just not going to do it. If I get with it, yeah. If I had to do it, you're going to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and because but it the, works. The underneath that is that's right. The underneath is because it works. If I were to just give you the answer, you're not going to work for it. You're going to just, oh, that's the answer. Okay, great. I don't have to do anything for it. No, that's not the way. It, it doesn't go like that. Not that's if not you want real. Shit. Not if you want real shift. Yeah. You know that. It, yeah. That, and exactly. you know, and that's what it's about. It's making that real shift happen. Mm -hmm. And you have to do the work. And you know, people. Not just temporary. Okay. Not just like a temporary fix. That's not what we're going for. No. 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 And that's what I think is yeah. great, like the work that you do with the Morrigan and what Martin does with Pure Heart. You know, it's about making real shift happen, and, and you've got to be serious about it. You know, um, you've got, is it uncomfortable? Yes. Is it hard? Yes. But, you know, yeah. people look at what Martin and I have, and, you know, it's like, oh, well, I want that. And, like, I, I was telling somebody, 
you know, oh, they want to be our friends. It's like, yeah, we look good on paper. But it, to be our friends, as you know, you're going to have to do the work. You can't be sitting in your shift, you know, just sitting there and whining. And it's like, whoa, anybody else smell that? <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, okay. you know, and it's not about us being hard on people. It's just be authentic. Keep moving forward. And a lot of people, you know, Martin and I have seen this through, uh, well, just about since we've been together, that it's the um, people can't keep up with us. You know, because it's a lot of work to yeah. do. Yeah, I get that too. Well, we only have I, a few minutes left, so I want to make sure that we definitely get in all the information. Because, what, we only have about five minutes left? Mm -hmm. All right, so you, you can get in touch with Morgan Lynn on embracewithin.com, correct? Is correct. that the best way to get through with you? Uh, for private sessions and to find out about, um, I love the coaching ideas you're doing and the ceremonies and, and the things that you have coming up. There's a up. lot of information on her website. There's a lot of information. Mm -hmm. I apologize for that. <laughs> but I do it all. That's the thing. It's yeah, it's the hyphenate practice. thing. And then you can, yes. you can get Martin and I at pureheartspace.com, and we'll be in Fort Lauderdale this coming week. We leave Wednesday nights, and we'll be there Thursday doing a past life regression and Saturday doing the fer fairy workshop, and we'll be back again in a couple of weeks doing some more work in there just go to pureheartspace.com now remember martin i didn't bring this up to you morgan either but i thought we've been trying to we don't always remember to end the show with like just a nice breathing exercise and i thought maybe we would incorporate this one with the morgan just a, you know like only about 30 seconds 45 seconds just a deep breath and breathing in the energy that she has of the strength and standing in your power what, what do you think okay yeah yeah absolutely. okay why don't you go ahead and take us through that? <laughs> or you want Martin to do it? I don't know the Morgan I don't. from. Yeah. No, that's I can let me just let me connect with her because she's been kind of standing off to the side. So she had to know I was going to ask. She likes my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So take a moment, close your eyes. Take a breath. Open up the root, connect to the fire that is within, the fire that you possess, the fire of change, the fire of transmutation. Allow the fire to rise into the sacral, igniting your passion. Allow it to rise further into the solar plexus, creating a beautiful boundary, healthy boundaries without making enemies, standing in your conviction and doing the work that is necessary. Rising into the heart, igniting your emotional capacity to feel every experience of your life. Rising into the throat so that you speak with conviction, that you speak from the heart, that you speak with love. Rising further into the eyes, into the ears, seeing and hearing all that is around you, being aware of your surroundings, allowing your perception to shift fountaining out through the crown, knowing that you are connected to source, knowing that you are protected and loved at all times, that you are not separate, that you are connected to the all. Now I get to work. Oh, I love that. That was awesome. <laughs> get her done. Now you can find Morgan <laughs> also on Blog Talk, which is embracewithin.com. She's on Facebook. We're on Facebook, Shift Happens TV. Mm -hmm. Um, right, we have everything. I want to make sure we get all the information in there. Um, but you'll have everything on your embracewithin.com. Get all her information. Find her on Facebook and Blog Talk and all that fun stuff. Thank you so much, Morgan. For Thank you so much for oh, joining you us. Guys, I love you so much. Thank oh, you. And you. Love you very too. Much. And then yeah. next week we are going to have Lisa McCourt, Hay House author, mm -hmm. talking about her Juicy Joy book and how to find Juicy Joy in your life. So until next week, remember to live your life with no regrets. And die laughing. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to Shift Happens TV. Join us each Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time as we take you on a metaphysical journey. Be enlightened and entertained as we take you through life, love, and beyond in an inspiring and humorous way. Live your life with no regrets and die laughing. Be sure to hop on over to the Spiritual Broadcast Network. It's the go-to place for all things spiritual. You'll discover internet television shows that you won't find anywhere else. 
You can also choose from hundreds of hours of spiritual documentaries and movies. You'll enjoy on-demand and live internet television programming 24-7. Best of all, we add new dramas, comedies, talk, and reality shows, and more on a daily basis. So why spend countless hours searching the web when you can quickly find just what you want on the Spiritual Broadcast Network? 